how was how were your plans for uh, maybe it's a hurtful question how, how were your plans for 2020 well if you mean the what plans were changed because of everything mm -hmm. uh, we had lots of musically um, many many things uh, were postponed or canceled not only for Yawning Man, but also for Fatso Jets and uh, my other band. We had, um, for Yawning Man, we had a tour up the coast uh, in California, three different festival uh, appearances, a festival also that I uh, helped produce is called Stoned and Dusted, that um, is here in the Joshua Tree area of uh, Southern California, where we live. And um, that was postponed, of course, till next year, 2021. We, we were to play a festival uh, in uh, New Mexico. Uh, that was postponed until next year. Um, and then, like I said, a tour up the coast with uh, some different performances, a very short tour, but um, mm. but it also, and then uh, Faso Justin had a full US tour with uh, Planet of Zeus that um, I was uh, going to be uh, helping those guys with backline and they couldn't come over. And obviously all the shows were canceled. So we, postponed that until 2021 and we're still trying to figure out how to put that together mm. um and also you know the venue that i work for uh when i'm not touring um has uh had a lot of big changes so they closed for a while completely now reopening very slowly still very little live music if any mm. um and they had a, a very aggressive live music program five days a week six days a week so you know everything across the board has changed however um because of these plans being canceled it you know it forces us to adapt if we want to continue to make music make art make creative things happen so we used the downtime to um, focus on making a film that we've dreamed about making for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, giant Rock. And, yeah, live at Giant Rock. And we, we also, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was safe. I'll use the word, it was safe for us to do this because the, the concept of the film was to go out into the desert with no audience. Hmm. So we didn't make any sacrifices in the concept. It actually added to um, the concept because it was so timely that because of social distancing and live performances being uh, compromised because of the social distancing, the, 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 the idea of the film kind of took on a new relevance that um, we we're out by ourselves with just the film crew, which was very small. It was only two, two, th three people on cameras and one guy running sound, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was only eight of us out there. And um, it just, uh, it took on this new, this totally new relevance uh, in the social distancing. It would, it would, it would, it was always an idea we've had for the last 20 years or so to do a film like this, capture the band in its, in our, mm. in our home, you know, in the desert performing. Um, but uh, especially now it seemed to have a, a even more meaning, you know? So we focused on that, you know, we took our time to do that. We, we released a, a viewing of it as part of this um, thing to commemorate the Stone and Dusted Festival. So we did a thing with the California Desert, Desert Wizards Association uh, 
back in May and um, just showed the film once. And now I've been working on it ever since, trying to re-edit and get all the artwork. Finally released uh, uh, pre-orders for it and stuff this week. So it's, it's actually happening. We're very excited. And I don't, you know, I don't know if we were touring and doing all that normal stuff, uh, working our day jobs, if this film would have happened, you know, so. So yeah, it, 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 opportunities come if you if you can stay positive and look, you know. Yeah. Um, when is the release of the documentary planned? Uh, it, we just announced the pre-sale of it uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can pre-order a copy of the DVD uh, by going to our website, yawningman.com. And... Uh, the physical DVDs will start shipping on uh, September 15th. And uh, we will be announcing tomorrow. Uh, you'll be able to upload the tracks uh, from our band camp and our website uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. which is, uh, what is the date tomorrow? Uh, Tuesday, 1st of September. September 1st, so you'll be able to download the music. The vinyl and CD is coming out on Heavy Psych Sounds, Italian label, which mm -hmm. released our last two records and the last Fatso Judson record as well. And the pre-sale on their sites goes on tomorrow, September 1st. So the whole package is really nice because we have the DVD, uh, and then also the DVD will be available, the, the film will be available uh, for uh, streaming, rental, download, and that, but that won't happen till October. And it'll happen around the same time that the vinyl uh, and CDs are actually available uh, for purchase. But the pre-sale starts tomorrow. Hmm. Um, let's go back uh, to your uh, last record, Macedonian Lines. Okay. Uh, first thing, what, uh, what about the title? The title was... Um, we were on tour uh, a year and a half ago, or a year... I wish I could remember the exact, the exact dates as it, it would be relevant. Um, I'd have to look. To, but anyway, we we're on tour. Uh, uh, not the last tour of Europe we did, but the prior. And it was our first time uh, through these regions of Macedonia. And um, at the time, and I, you know, I, I haven't been now in quite a while, so I don't know how things are right now with uh, with the refugees. Um, but we had we had uh, quite an experience. We had to pass through those borders uh, three times, I believe, back and forth. The way the tour was routed is it kept taking us back through these these border areas that were experiencing a lot of problems. And there, there were um, refugee uprisings and there, there was such an influx, they're having great difficulty uh, keeping everyone safe and fed and um, uh, the living conditions were questionable and, and it would, they were struggling and the couple times we went through there were actually some uprisings there was you know they were throwing Molotov cocktails onto the road and and anyway it was you know us coming from the United States now things are changing here um, we're starting to experience some of these these up these uprising as you probably have seen 
mm -hmm. um, due to police brutality and systemic racism and and this political situation in the United States is is uh, in the last year has changed the the landscape of 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 what we had uh, our daily lives and these um, these kind of these kind of extreme events were rare, um, but now we see more and more and more and more, both at uh, because of the pandemic, because of the political situation with our president. So we're seeing it more. But for for guys from the United States that live in Southern California to go over to these these areas in in Europe and 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 experience those things it was a, it left an impression on us and um so you know the the title came from that experience of passing through those borders and see there was a couple times you know we were there and didn't know if we were going to be able to make it through or not. and maybe we have to turn around and, and figure out another way you know um so anyway, the the title was just that, you know, it was just that experience of being there during that specific time that they were experiencing those things. So uh, that's all. Do then uh, the this sort of uh, impression or the feelings uh, the band had, uh, uh, let's say, in the in, at the borders of uh, Macedonia, then. Uh, played as well a role in the, um, in the mood of the album, in the development of the, in the ideas you had when you, when you were writing the songs of the album? Uh, you know, most of that record, with the exception of a couple tracks, was the result of a lot of improvising on tour. So the way this band works, it's not our it's not our method, but it's just kind of the way things happen. Um, we we tend to improvise a lot when we're touring. So we you know we do have these basic um, structures of of songs, song ideas, a melody here, a melody there, a bass line, a vibe, an approach. But then we we expand on it. So in the live performances, we you know we go off and for for however long it takes to 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 explore uh, w w intuitively, you know what what inspires us on in the moment you know so so you know you could say that uh, that the, whatever is happening at the time is influencing the music but was it a was it a focused concept that we said okay we're going to what is, you know we're going to reflect on these experiences and then write no no we we just we just get on stage we we play we close our eyes we whatever comes out comes out um, and uh, when we came home, we had those, because of playing those ideas every, every night, every night, even though they're improvised, they start to distill down into uh, little concepts that we would revisit, riffs and, and melodies and things that we revisit. These become songs. These become you know, a verse with a chorus, a verse with a mm. chorus, these kinds of things. But, um, but we, you know, we rarely approach music with some sort of concept over here and then try to meet that. And, and we, we usually just create intuitively what feels good. And then the, the titles of the songs and these things are really an, kind of an afterthought. We, we, we hear the color of the music and we go, oh, well, let's call that color this, you know? Mm -hmm. We like to have fun. We have a lot of fun with titles and stuff, you know? We were just, 
I was just going back and forth with Gary about <clears throat> about the titles for the songs on on the jams we did on the film, you know, and we just come up with stuff that kind of sounds like or fits or you know it's kind of like naming a painting or something and mm -hmm. it's like naming an abstract painting rather than naming a painting of you know fruit in a bowl like some still life thing it's like most uh, most yawning man's music is abstract mm -hmm. so so there are because there's nothing in general there are not uh, let's say um I mean, as you are an instrumental band, uh, there are no right. uh, messages or um, that you want right. to... Uh, no? Right, right. No, the message is intu intuitive feeling. It's a feeling, not a... It's not an intellectual message. It's a, it's a emotional message. Hmm. So, so in that way, the listener is uh, totally free to interpret it, let's say, no? Yeah. And people tell me that all the time. It's crazy. Like people are like, <clears throat> it's why it kind of, people tell me it makes a good driving music because it's kind of, uh, as you see the landscape passing by or you see the city or the mountains or the desert passing by, the music adds to that experience of what you're visually seeing. Whereas if you're focused in on lyrics that are telling a story or, or telling a poem, or mm -hmm. then it's taking you somewhere else. It's taking you to that person's story. Now, yeah, it might fit with the visuals around you, but but this the the instrumental. One thing I love about the about instrumental about music, instrumental music is that. Um, it, it, it you interpret it in the, in the moment, so it can it and it and it creates a feeling, not so much a not so much an image, but a feeling, you mm -hmm. know. So I think that explains it, kind of. Um, concerning um, the recording of the album, did you have uh, you normally have? Uh, I assume, but I don't know. Uh, you have a live approach when recording the album, or do you do many? You take separately the tracks, or how? How is not? No, live. Time? We record the. We we usually record the trio live, mm -hmm. and then we go back and add, for instance, some Macedonia lines. The only track that we did differently was I have this old uh, old or home organ, and the home organ has these um, rhythm tracks built in, bossa nova, Latin, you know, country pop, whatever. It's an old organ from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Lowry organ, they're called. We love them. We, make, we use them all the time. But it has this, you know, you know, these weird little beats that the organ can play. You can play along. But we wrote a uh, the big, the opening song is called uh, uh, "Virtual Funeral." If you listen carefully, you hear at the beginning this rhythm track. It's coming from the organ. So mm -hmm. I I had to put that on. We listened through the headphones. And Bill plays the drum to the organ track, the organ rhythm track, and then I come with the bass. And then we go back and I put some piano. I play piano barely. I put a little piano. Gary comes back and he puts some slide guitar and some this and that. And we mm -hmm. make layers, you know. Very mm -hmm. simple. Very w w The way we record is very, very simple. Uh, it's not a complex process of with the um, click track and we scratch tracks and then we go back and redo and, uh, you know, we just, we record live, then we add some stuff to it to bring, to have fun and bring some more life to mm -hmm. it. And, and that's it. It's very simple. We can make a record in two days, you know, it's like pretty, 
pretty simple. We, we have in the past meticulously pieced together like a puzzle recordings, but not so much with Yawning Man's music, but with another band we had called the Sort of Quartet, which was actually Yawning Man, but just we changed the name. Mm-hmm. But um, there was a record we did where we really enjoyed the the uh, the uh, opportunities that a, a recording studio with computers, like Pro Tools and these kinds of, where you can go in and edit little pieces and move it here and move it there and repeat and loop and turn mm-hmm. it backwards. And we did a lot of that just as an experiment to use all the tools. Mm. But, um, but with Yawning Man, it's just almost like recording is like when we make the music and in, in composing the music. It's very intuitive, flowing, just, you know, simple. That's the way we usually do it, yeah. Mm. So also in a way to be able to, to deliver it then on a stage, no? Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> But sometimes, you know, I don't, we don't care to, to have to be able to recreate exactly what mm. we do, what we do in the studio to do live. It's, it's uh, two different things. Um, and sometimes I think fan, a fan of the music may be disappointed, like, oh, I wanted to hear the, the way it was on the record, but it's different, you know, mm. sometimes a song on the record may be five minutes long and when you play it live, it could be 15 minutes long, you know, mm-hmm. and just go and go and go. So two different things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Oh, no. A song uh, actually remained in my head uh, uh, for the music and actually also for the titles uh, of uh, Macedonian Lines, uh, uh, which is uh, I Make Weird Choices. Uh huh. What uh, what about this song? Um, That song, well, that song was, there's actually a recording of the night that we we wrote that song on that's a perfect example that you bring that up of a song that was written on stage improvising in a tour on a Mm -hmm. tour and the first time we played that the the basic elements of that song it starts with a little bass thing and and that was recorded we recorded that at a theater in oh god i can't remember it was in italy Mm. with um a beautiful theater that that has a built-in recording studio and max from are you familiar with go down records of course sir okay max uh, max max Mm -hmm. set up this show he set up this show where it was maybe 50 people, maybe not that many, in the seats of the theater, at Teatro. Mm-hmm. And then the band, it was really beautiful. I wish I could send you a picture. The, the band was set up, two drums, two bass amps, two uh, his band stuff and our band's backline, both set up on the stage next to each other. Uh, So we did a Yawning Man set, they did their set, and then we played all together. And in in this jam, this, this bass line came out and Gary's melody line was right off the top of his head, boom. And then from that night, we started playing that song every night of the tour, jamming it. And it Mm. developed, it developed, it changed, it changed, it changed, it changed. We got home, we made the record in the high desert. And this, this, this is what you hear. This, the, um, 
the title was just Gary coming up with a fun title, you know, because he's a weirdo and, he, you know, we're, we're weirdos. See, band of weirdos. So, 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 so that, you know, it was one of those titles that just, we liked the title and we just gave it to the song. But the, 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 that song is a really good example of how we, how we do stuff and how we made a lot of the music on that record. And then and, uh, and it's funny. Yeah, Max has that recording of that night where the first time we played that, mm -hmm. we cap captured that, yeah. And do you normally then uh, record yourself uh, uh, when you are on a tour? Then you, you record yourself uh, on the stage or um, in order no, to... No, we just, should. Uh, we should because some, like the Grateful Dead, you know, they're always making the, the board tapes and, and the audience is always recording the dead because every night the music is different. Hmm. The, the Grateful Dead is known for their incredible improvising you know um i mean yeah i i i've always thought you know some i no, none of our fans really ever took off where they record the sets for for the improvising i don't think that that's a thing mm -hmm. but um it could be it could be a thing because we really do we really do it, you know, it's like every night is different. Mm -hmm. uh, and even songs that are more structured, like uh, if we take a song, like I'll take a song that's more structured, I'll pick a song, like uh, Perpetual Oyster is a song that is on uh, record ro rock formations. It's a very structured song. It has a verse, a chorus, a bridge, verse, chorus, bridge, and you know. But when we play it live, at the end of the the bridge, we go, we take off, you know? Mm. And sometimes that can go turn into this thing and this thing and this thing, and we may, we may never come back. <laughs> we, sometimes we get, we get too far into the improv, improvisation that we, we can't figure out how to get back to the song, you know? Mm. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I should do that. That's a good idea. I should get one of these little field recorders and always give it to the sound man and say, okay, hit play and let, you know, go. But no, it's not a thing that we do. No. I mean, then you'll need a lot of time also to release and again to all the... Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> a lot of space. It's a good idea. It's mm. a good idea, though. We could come home from a tour and say, and put up on the website or the band camp performance from Austria performance from Italy performance from Spain perform you know and just people could trade them and that would be a good idea like a virtually a tour that's it. yeah <laughs> um, a few songs uh, uh, from Yoni Man uh, uh, have vocals I mean I I guess two maximum three no um, for instance, like Catamaran um, uh, on the previous record, uh, um, how did you decide to, to put vocals, for instance, on uh, Catamaran? Oh, well, when Catamaran was written, we, I, uh, we had a lot of, a, a, a lot of the music that we wrote had lyrics, had vocals. Mm -hmm. um, that was 30 something years ago. We had, um, if you listen to, you can hear a lot more of our music that has vocals if you listen to the Birth of Soul record, which is probably YouTube or down, you can definitely find it at our band camp, mm -hmm. Yawning Man band camp to hear. Um, the original recording of Catamaran and then several other songs that have lyrics or I'm singing a lot more. Mm -hmm. Why that changed? Um, uh, we really embraced, the band started to embrace instrumental music when we started to 
uh, really develop the composition um, and get, it got very, our music got very progressive and very complex. Mm -hmm. And then it was less about singing and lyrics and more focused on playing, just playing all these crazy parts and time signatures. It was like a math equation or a puzzle that we would put together. It was very fun. We, we got very inspired by it. And this is when we changed the name to the sort of quartet. Mm. So the Yawning Man went from, you know, we, we had instrumental songs, we had these intuitive jammy songs, but we also had these compositions with lyrics. And then we got really into these more complex instrumental uh, compositions with songwriting. And um, it, it, just, it just started to snowball. It just, we were just writing more and more crazy, crazy stuff. So we changed the name because it just didn't fit. Yawning Man didn't fit the, the music anymore. It was, it was um, I don't know, we were listening to a lot of progressive rock and jazz, like King Crimson, Thelonious Monk, um, stuff that was really challenging. And um, we became an instrumental band, you know, it was a, it was, probably five, six, seven years, maybe more that we mm. were the sort of quartet. We released many records. People sometimes think that Yawning Man, you know, started in 1986, didn't release a record until 2005. It's not true because we released records all through the 90s, but it was under the name The Sort of Quartet. But it was the same guys. It was me, mm -hmm. Gary, Alfredo Hernandez and my cousin Larry, mm -hmm. and then and then we had a different drummer when Alfredo was off with uh, with Caius. Mm -hmm. We had a different drummer, uh, Rob Peterson. But to answer your question, it was a very long answer. I'm sorry, but um, to answer your question, when we came back to the Yawning Man was me and Gary and Alfredo started to play again as a trio. And we were tired of all the rig rigid, rigid, complex, think, think, think. You know, everything was an equation. Ba, 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 beep, beep. Beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, 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 enough. We just want to relax and breathe and be in, in, intuitively play, like I described earlier. So mm -hmm. we took back the name Yawning Man and, okay. And, but we were still in that mode of let's just play. We don't need to meet, when you have lyrics, you need to meet, the music needs to meet those. Not, it doesn't need to, you can improvise lyrics too. You can, and I do, you can, you can have lyrics and sing them over improvised music. I've done mm -hmm. that. So like uh, using voices as know. instruments. Or no, but actually have, yes, but actually have lyrics, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that you've written and planned. I've done that too. But there's something about Yawning Man is just, a, it's, a, it's about the freedom and, and not meeting these, well, I have to, I have to, say this word at this time, I have to sing this line at this time. There's no, with, with Yawning Man, there's no association to, the, to those rules, you know, you just, mm -hmm. you just play intuitively. So there was less and less writing lyrics and songs. But I think we're, we're now at a time where we would like to do more of that again because it's all about balance, you know? Mm -hmm. So the jamming is like, ah, we, we, we express that and we get that, but maybe now we can have a few. So we wrote a couple mm -hmm. songs on uh, Revolt Against Tired Noises. We have a couple of lyrics. 
mm -hmm. there, but um, but maybe more in the future, maybe more s song structures with lyrics, you know, hmm. on our next record. That's a good news. Um, let's talk. Uh, oh, wait a, uh, just a second. I turn on the lights here because. Meanwhile, the sun went away. Um, uh, let's, say, let, let's talk a bit about the, the desert and the, um, the generator parties. Um, do you see the generator parties as, uh, as um, just a way to freely party, so without much boundaries, or do you see it also as a society escape uh, or um, other reasons what what do you see no i think it was all that those things it was um it is um it's simple you know it's just uh it's a it's, it's a beautiful fun place the desert is 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 unique for these things because you have such a, a beautiful, expansive space. Um, it's very rugged and tough. So, I mean, people go out into the mountains or they go to the beach or they go, everybody escapes to do their thing and enjoy being outside. Um, but, you know, the de in the desert, we, you know, you can ride motorcycles, you can shoot guns, you can blow stuff up. It's like, you know, it's uh, it, it's pretty unique in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and what it offered us was an answer to um, to the lack of 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 venues for us to play mm -hmm. our music and bring people out to get together and hear music. There, it was difficult of here. There wasn't the punk clubs, the underground venues that had original music. There was one or two little places, a pool hall maybe, or a, or a restaurant that we could convince to uh, let us set up in the corner and have. And that just, it just, you know, it was fun and, and we loved it, that too, but it, it, it compared to going out to some mesa or some canyon and inviting all your friends out and being out, out in that, uh, be, do whatever you want, bonfire, have your beers. Uh, the freedom was amazing. Um, but, you know, it, it, there's always responsibility. If you go out, doesn't matter how far you go out, if somebody gets hurt, or if something catches fire or something, then, you know, uh, things can go, go badly. So mm -hmm. even though all the years that we enjoyed the freedom of the generator parties and, and had some wonderful uh, experiences, you know, with lots of people and sometimes not so many people, but um, eventually, you know, some problems started happening. People got violent or um, there was fights and, Fires, people were were irresponsible with the bonfire or um, uh, where they parked their cars. They were running over cactus and just just it just you know we got irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So the the you know I got try eventually got in trouble by the they call it a bureau of land management that looks over and protects the deserts, the, na the nature, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be responsible no matter, how, it doesn't matter how far out until you go to the fucking moon. I don't care, you gotta be responsible with what you're doing. So we eventually went back from the generator party and being out in the desert playing, we went back into the club. I opened a club to um, offer a solution I opened a place in back in the early 90s. And um, so, you know, it was an answer for a while and it was an amazing thing. And now we do it now again, but it's very different now because mm -hmm. it, uh, we have to, you know, 
give people a safe experience. If we invite them out into the desert, we have to be careful. So it costs money to do it now where we used to just say, ah, show up, you know. And I would still do that. I would still just go out, start the generator, tell everybody, okay, guys, we're going to be out at Giant Rock next week on Saturday night. Come out. That We could do that. That would be fine. But um, I've, I, I went through the whole thing to the point where I was inviting people out and not giving them s- safety. Um, mm-hmm. People were getting hurt. People were getting in fights, fires. So I, I just started being a little more responsible about it. Um, but, uh, you know, I had my fun with it. I did it for years and years and years. I did it for, you know, more than 10 years. So I had my experiences. Um, we might do that again really soon where we just invite a bunch of people to meet us at a certain spot. But um, because of the social distancing and not being able to tour and stuff. But anyway, yeah. Um, but, so you mean uh, basically there are uh, no more generator parties at the moment or um, in the last year? No, uh... no, they're doing, um, they're doing a... I... Sorry. They're, oh, they're no doing a... a um, right now they're doing weekly, every Saturday a uh, performance, different performances at a, at a, a, a ranch in Joshua Tree. Um, it's a stage just set out in the middle of the desert. Um, but they're encouraging people to uh, be safe and stay with their vehicles. And uh, it's not like, you know, crazy get together. But no, People are, just the other day, some bands were playing up at, uh, up at what they call here the nude, nude Bowl. It's a swimming pool in the middle of the desert from an old uh, abandoned uh, resort. Um, but, you know, it's happening once in a while, but not, we used to do it just about every weekend. Um, but, you know, we were kids. We had nothing else to do, so... But I, there's no young guys around doing it too much around this area. Mm. Um, but there are some some cool, you know, events happening here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know the big one that we do is Stone and Dusted, and that. But like I said, that is a production. It's not really just a casual thing where we go mm-hmm. out like doing doing a jam. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's like a festival. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, let's talk about uh, stone and rock uh, and desert rock. Uh, what is your opinion about these um, labels? Um, I think, you know, I, I, there, there's, there's always a need for people to have a way to to communicate about about styles of, of, of styles of music, of film, of whatever it is, you know, there, people need these like little taglines to um, get oriented, like to to orient it, yeah. To mm. so you know, I understand that. I, I don't um, identify with, with I, I, I guess, the, the, I, I feel a little more comfortable with the desert rock one because it's so wide open and there's no, there's no uh, relationship to drugs or, I always thought the stoner rock one was, was, um, I, I I didn't ever I not that I have any opinion about drugs or or, or pot or you know anything like that. I, I don't have any opinion about that at all. I don't care. Um but I always thought it was a bit uh limiting in the way that that it was, you know, it just 
it just sounded so so limiting to me um but you know like in the 60s they had acid rock and they had eh, eh, and psychedelic rock and it's it all it all stems from from the drug experience you know i get mm -hmm. that um but i liked desert rock kind of because it kind of it gave our music scene some sort of um uh acknowledgement and it also was so wide open that you couldn't really by saying it you didn't really get an impression of a sound in your head you know when people say stoner rock the first thing i think of is is like sweet leaf from black sabbath <laughs> you know it's like that pretty much sums up the sound of stoner rock you know um heavy detuned um, mm. Sabbath influenced. And when I was a kid, I remember when I first heard Black Sabbath, my brother was playing the first record in his, in his bedroom with the black lights on and everything. It kind of, uh, sorry, man, people are calling me. Um, no anyway, yeah, I, I, you know, I, it, it, uh, we use it to describe, we use, we hashtag Stone Rock Yawning Man, hashtag Stone, because people look there for, you know, they, we're part of that music scene and it just is what it is. So it's a way of communicating, you know. Uh, I don't tend to use it to describe our music. Um, I don't think it really does describe our music very well. Mm -hmm. But um, but I'm you know I'm fine with using it as a communication tool. <laughs> <laughs> um, how then? Uh, um, how are your feelings then uh, uh, towards uh, um, being called uh, one of the fathers or the fathers of uh, Stoner and Desert Rock? I you know I've that I just that was another thing that. I don't know who started that, but I think what it was, was Caius mentioned in an interview, either Hami or Brandt mentioned, hmm. mentioned that they used to come watch us play or come to, you know, those guys used to practice, Caius were sons of Caius, they were called at the time, or maybe even Cats and John, they used to practice in my garage. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, a, a journalist will hear that story and then say, oh, well, this guy was there, you know, started this or that. I didn't start, I mean, when I was, when I was 14, I started playing in bands around here and there was already some punk bands in Palm Springs. There was a guy named, a, a band called uh, Target 13, and there was a skateboard shop that owned by a guy named Mike Bates. He had the band. There was already, and, and these guys, I was looking at them like, oh, I want to do that. You know, so it just, it just, it's one of those things that like somebody, some guy wrote that, and then it, it, it people use it. They use it like the term stoner rock to describe this thing. But no, I was just, what I did is I, me and my cousin, especially Larry, we set up shows, you know, we, we loved to set up, perform. Our parents were in the restaurant business, in the entertainment business. They, they were singers um, and had a restaurant. So they were putting on parties every night, basically. When you came to our family's restaurant, you, they sang to you and they fed you and you had drinks. So it was in my blood to like throw parties, to like put on events. It was in my blood. Like I knew how to do it as a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. So we did that. We were active in making this music scene have events have shit where people got together mm. whether it was a generator party or or a, a gig at a at a restaurant or a pool hall we 
made the flyers, we booked the bands, we stood at the front door and took the five bucks, we brought the PA system. We So, and then eventually in the 90s, I opened a nightclub, the first real rock and roll club that this area ever had. So people were like, well, this dude did a bunch of stuff to make shit happen for people to come out. But Godfather is so, it's, it's you know, that is... I'm not comfortable with that at all. I'm not, mm. I would never say, and the legend word, somebody used that to describe the band in, in uh, about the movie. And I was like, well, I'm going to use it. It was a quote if, for the movie, I'm going to use it. But it was like totally, I'm totally uncomfortable. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm Mr. Modest guy or <laughs> want to be real modest and humble. It, it honestly feels like uncomfortable with, to use those words because we're just, all we did is set up shows. We did stuff. We kept busy because, and we, we didn't do it because we were making money or anything. We just did it because we love to do it. Like guys love to go out and skateboard or love to go out and go surfing or they love to go play fucking golf. What, we love to go play music. So we're just doing this shit for the fun of it. But it was a lot, like we did it a lot. We did a lot of, we just kept busy doing it. And um, so people look at it like we started something, but we didn't start anything. We just kept, we just kept, you know, we were inspired by the punk scene. And the punk mm -hmm. scene was do shit yourself. Don't, you don't need to send demo tape to that booking agent to get a gig at that club. You fucking do it yourself, get a warehouse, mm -hmm go out in the desert, set up your own show. That's what we did. And, and so people think like, you know, there was something, I started something. I didn't start anything. I was just doing what other guys are doing. But, you know, I, I'm flattered by it. It's cool, but I don't feel like, I don't feel it, it's true. Mm -hmm. So instead of feeling flattered for something I did or feeling respect, I feel uncomfortable because it's not really the truth, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like, um, blown out of proportion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. Maybe you to, to have a, a genre of music or whatever you need, I guess, a scene, of course, there's no, um, there's no single yeah, that person I mean, doing, uh, but I mean, yeah, for sure you help a, a lot on developing that, that, I mean, you just, uh, as you just said. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, we're close to, to the end. Uh, um, touring bands. Uh, um, I have the feeling that, uh, uh, besides 2020, of course, um, many more bands uh, come from the US to Europe than the other way around. Why do you think that? It's just uh, because uh, it's maybe more difficult to, to play in the US, uh, there are more instances, what do you think? I think it's a bunch of factors. I think mainly it's um, the system of, the distances is huge. That's a huge one because it costs a lot of money for a band to, to come here and tour, it's very expensive. Um, it's expensive for us to go to Europe too. Mm -hmm. However, in two weeks, we can cover a lot of ground. You know, we could play every night in a in a in a uh, a, a decent venue where people are going to show up. But there's so many things at play to bring a band. Let's say let's let's say for example. Um, I'm trying to pick a band that every that you'll let's say like a band like Color Haze, for instance. Okay. First of all, most of the bands that go to Europe are are going there because they actually have more of a fan base in Europe than they do in the States. So a band like Yawning Man or Nebula or Brant. Um these bands that are still in kind of an underground obscure level um you know but yet 
have enough of a draw that they can put together a tour. Um, but it's not a huge thing. It's, it's done in nightclubs, you know, say, you know, 200 capacity to 500 capacity nightclubs. Mm -hmm. um, we have more of a fan that we, it's easier for us to tour over there than it is here. We, you know, we, we, we have more of a draw. The, 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 the venues are better attended. Here, on the West Coast, we do okay. On the East Coast, we do okay. But in the middle of the United States, which is massive, you know, it's very difficult to get people to come out because maybe they don't know. They just don't mm -hmm. know, you know. So the, the European bands suffer the same thing. Um, there's a lot more rules. Uh, there's a lot more rules for a band. Like, you know, in Gabriele, and the guys come over or some other bands that I've helped come over uh, by supplying them my equipment, you know, for backline or I give them my van to drive, um, rent them my van to drive. Uh, they can't bring anything with them. They can't come with anything because if they, if, if the, if, if, if they, if, if the uh, government finds out, I'll say the government, it, it's a big word, mm -hmm. but if the government knows that they're coming over here to earn money and work, they have to fill out all kinds of work visas and have all of this kind of stuff. Whereas if we go, if we go to England, yes, we have to have work visas. But most of Europe, we can just show up and do our thing. We pay our taxes as we go and the money that mm -hmm. we make. It's a much more open, simple system. Uh, so it encourages this kind of um, interaction. It encourages us to go there and work. And it's good for their economy. It's good because we pay our taxes. We do pay taxes on the money we make. We pay taxes on the merchandise that we sell. Um, so it's, it's all, it's just so much simpler. Here, like everything else, like our healthcare system, like our fucking, everything is more complicated and, and difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. But I love it, I love our country, but it is more difficult to do these, these kinds of things. Uh, so it, 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 you know, we are going to tour next year, uh, hopefully without, uh, if everyone is better and we have a thing for this virus figured out, we'll be able to go in 2021. Um, we'll see. It'll be interesting. What, 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 but right now you can't even, they want you, you know, we can't even fly into Europe because of this disease, you know? Mm. So uh, it's not allowed. We're not even allowed to land there. So, um, Next year, there's supposed to be a band from Greece, the Planet of Zeus, is supposed to come here to tour, and they're going to use my equipment and my van, you know. And, uh, and that's a year from September, or May, I'm sorry, a year from mm. May. So next May, May 2021. But they had to start the process to become authorized They've started months and months ago to get mm -hmm. their visas, to get their passports approved for, and they're going into Canada. They're going not just the United States, but into other parts of North America. Very complicated. Mm -hmm. For us to go, we just buy our plane tickets and make sure our passports are okay <laughs> and go, you know? So, <laughs> there's a lot of factors to answer your question. It's not as simple as, as mm -hmm. one or two things. There's a lot. Um, Sardinia, as on Friday, this um, part of this, of this is going to be aired uh, uh, in, um, in Radio Pigreco, Sardinian Web Radio. Um, I mean, you have been to Sardinia several times. Yeah. Uh, how do you like it? What's, what are... Uh... I absolutely love it. I, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite places on, on the planet. We, I, the first time I went was magical, was like 
an experience like I don't know, and I mean I don't just mean the the you know the beaches and the and the countryside and the agroturismo and the, I mean even in the cities, just the people, the um, it's a it's people with a lot of heart that mm. that that we have become friends with, and uh, but just the lifestyle, the food. The music, the the beautiful islands, it's just amazing. And the first time I went was amazing. The second time I went was amazing. The third and the last time I went was absolutely amazing. It's and one of play, the you play the tour with oh, yeah. everybody, no? Yeah. Oh I mean, just fuck, dude. Crazy. It's crazy. So it, it's like a, a very special place in my heart and and uh it's a, it's one place that i always will go back to uh not just with for music just to go just to go and be and and have some peace you know and yeah i love really truly love it and i mm -hmm. think you know i think uh oliver um and andrea and these guys for for having us over all these years mm -hmm. because andrea it's Guido. been uh, yeah Yeah, it's amazing. I he just posted uh, again vi the video of us playing at the at the tower. Mm, you know? I saw it. I saw it. Mm. Yeah. Um, I even uh, read uh, in one your past interviews of uh, several years ago that you had a sort of a documentary project uh, with uh, with Sardinia, uh, like with uh, live bands playing uh, in landscapes. Yeah. Was, I well, mean, was that, that a really old interview? Yeah, that was the, an idea that we got. It actually, this, that was part of the thinking that resulted in our film that we just made. Hmm. But, was, but we started thinking about it there. Um, one, when you're at Duna Jam, we did like one location, then another location, you know. So we started getting the ideas of like having one set from this location, one set from that location, but we never did it. You know, it was, it was an idea. It was something we discussed mm. and got excited about it. But part of that brainstorming resulted in the movie that we just made. So there is a bit of Sardinia in giant rock. There is totally. <laughs> Uh, last questions uh, because I think the 20 minutes are over since a while. Um, a future, uh, besides um, plans that um, it's really difficult to make now, uh, what do you want to experiment in the future uh, in the music? Um, well, we're, we're doing, we're, we've been talking about doing some recording from home and use, utilizing some instruments outside of what we normally bass, guitar, drums with some synthesizers and these organs that I was telling you about. And this is one idea we've been talking about um, with no connection to live performance. So completely mm -hmm experiment in the recording process. So uh, very different from what I described before, which is a intuitive improvising. Mm. This is completely pieced together uh, and getting outside the box with different instruments, acoustic, um, synthesizers, vint vintage sounds. So we see, we'll see right now, It's a lot of dreaming, a lot of, oh, we should do this, we should do that, because this thing, we just don't know. <laughs> we just don't know what's going on, you know. Every day mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is a different thought about the future, you know. But, um, but Yawning Man will be, will, before, at the beginning of 2021, we will record a new record. Uh, besides this live record that's coming out. 
uh, a new studio album and, uh, and Fatso Jetson as well. And also um, an acoustic record. I will be doing a, a, a record of um, really basic stripped down acoustic songs, collaborating with a few different friends on that. So there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff. And then we also have, you know, Gary and Bill doing um, Big Scenic Nowhere, which is a collaboration with Bob Baltz from Fu Manchu. And um, the guys from Most Generator, Tony Reed. And we also are doing two different collaborative records with a band from England called the Sons of Alpha Centauri. And one is called Yawning Sons, and that is Yawning Man guys with the members of this band, of Sons of Alpha Centauri. And then there's another one, which the working title, I'm not sure if this is going to be the name of the project, is called Fatso Jet Sons. I don't think it's going to be the name, but I'm not sure. Uh, and that is the same. It's a collaboration with these guys, except I'm singing, writing lyrics and singing uh, to music that they primarily compose. So it's, it's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. But we are supposed to right now the plan and probably will change, but I, you know, it is a plan. But right now the plan is to go back to Europe in September of 2021 mm -hmm. for a couple weeks. We will go to Sardinia mm -hmm. um, and to Berlin too, I hope. No, yeah, Berlin is for sure because we're playing with color heads. So oh, Germany will be well covered, yeah. But it was supposed to originally be a nightliner trip where we mm -hmm. all get on a bus. There's no fucking way <laughs> that's going to happen. Oh, of course. If there's any any coronas lurking anywhere, there's no buses that are going to. Of course. That yeah. ain't going to happen. So uh, I don't know. We'll see, man. You know, I I I to, like I told I told everybody we can make plans all we want, but God's plans. Are totally different you know mm. so we see we see what happens so I, I throw it out there because yeah it's a thing and yeah we've committed to do these things but you know I I, I had all kinds of commitments said in 2020 that are all gone and mm. now all I do is you know do this a lot of zoom meetings and a lot of um, keeping in touch that way so yeah, but I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you having me on, man. I appreciate absolutely I appreciate you you are giving this interview, and I I, I have the feeling that everybody uh, just wants the 2020 to to be over. <laughs> yeah, vamonos, <laughs> ba basta, <laughs> basta, basta. <too>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mario. I really, really want to thank you again for uh, for this interview, and I really wish you mm, tons of luck for uh, your projects, for uh, coming back to Europe, and uh, you know, with Johnny Man, with Fatsi Jetson, and uh, all the musical projects. Uh, yeah, thank so you. yeah, see you in uh, I guess in 2021. Then. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks to you.